Hello and welcome to another photo editing video. Today I want to show you my five favorite plugins for Photoshop and Lightroom. So those are tools I don't want to live without. And I'm making this video because recently I had to reinstall my complete system. So I also had to reinstall Photoshop and Lightroom and I went through the installation of those plugins again. So let's start with the first essential plugin, which I've been using, I don't know, five, six, seven years. And this one is free and it's the web sharpener by Andreas Resch. So whenever I work on an image, at the end I want to prepare it for web and for it I want to do web sharpening, conversion to sRGB, all those stuff and I use the web sharpener for it. This plugin here is available as an extension for Photoshop. You find it on Adobe Exchange and you can directly install it inside your Creative Cloud app. So it's an officially released extension here and I'll also leave links to all the extensions and plugins in the description below if you're interested. So once you've installed it, you get this panel here and here you make some basic settings. So I always want to duplicate the image. I also want to convert to 8-bit. Here you set the final size and once you made some changes, you can also save those as a preset. For example, I have one for Me Bright Web, which is for my homepage where I use 12ID. Then you can go down here, just use the quick sharpening or the standard sharpening where you have a bit more control. So you can make changes to those and also include those if you save your preset here. So all you need to do now, press play here, then you get a duplicate layer here. So your original is preserved, sharpening is applied and voila, just looks fantastic out of the box. Sometimes I feel the sharpening is a little bit too much. So I go here into the group which says sharpening group and I reduce the opacity a bit. And afterwards I just press Control Shift Alt S and save for web, for which I use JPEG some quality which gives me a size of four to 500K. Optimized, very important, embed color profile, convert to sRGB, which has already been done. And then I can save, upload it to the web and can be sure it looks great. Now the second plugin is a set of plugins and it's also free. I mentioned it in the last video where I talked about my print preparation workflow and it's the Nick plugins. So the plugins were acquired by Google and they released a free version. And here, if you do a little Google, you find some links. For example, here, that's a German site that still hosts the full version here. And I have the version 1.2.11, which I found works well when installed with Photoshop CC. There are also some other installers which sometimes make problems when you install them. I sometimes have trouble, don't see the plugins in Photoshop. But with this version, I have no problems at all if I follow the right workflow, which I'm going to show you. So you can download this full version here. And then when you run the installer, you go through the different steps. And then once you end up here, the only thing you need to do is click on the plus here and find the plugins folder of your Photoshop installation, which for me is on the C drive under program files, Adobe Photoshop 2024. Here's the plugins folder. And since I already installed it, I already have this folder. So I created a Google folder inside of the plugins. I select the Google folder, press OK, and then you can just install it. And for me, it worked out of the box. I have now the plugins available in Photoshop. Let me quickly show you. When I go under filters, you'll see here the Nick collection and there you see a whole bunch of them. Color Effects Pro 4, which is something I use a lot. Define 2, this is to reduce noise. It's not as good as some of the more modern noise reduction tools, especially Lightroom with its AI noise reduction is much more sophisticated, but it's also something that can give you good results. I don't use the HGI effects, but as I showed in the last video, the output sharpener is something I use to prepare for printing. Let's just head to the Color Effects Pro so I can show you very quickly what's included. And it's actually a lot. There are many, many filters of which I just use a bunch. And I'll show you my favorite filter, which is here the Pro Contrast. So here you're in the landscape, you can find it. And you can also add those to favorites. For example, polarization is another one I like to use. And there's a lot of filters and you can just play around and check what they do. But the Pro Contrast is a very cool filter because those sliders add beautiful contrast to your images. And down here you can directly preserve the shadows and the highlights. So basically you have luminosity masks built in. You have this for every filter and then you can set control points, which is a way to restrict your settings to a certain area. And those 
feather out naturally and yeah you can put one here put one down here and then if i make changes those are kind of restricted mostly to that area and then feather out so let's make this a bit smaller so you better see how it's restricted also this one now you see how the contrast correction is very naturally feathering out into the other area so this selective circle works very well and yeah just install it it's free play around with it find your favorite tools but yeah this is a set of plugins i've been using also for a very long time another plugin which i've been using also for nearly as long as the other two is Lumenzia by Greg Benz. This one is not free. I think it's available for around $40. The cool thing is you get free updates. So since I've been using it, I got updates every one or two months. So you always have the latest features. You don't have to pay additionally, which I find very nice. So it's definitely a worthwhile investment. He also has a free version of the panel. So just head to his homepage he has a lot of training material and here you see there's Lumenzia, $40. That's how much it always costs. So also he didn't increase the prices. You can also get his course where he shows how to use it. And as I said, he has a lot of videos on his YouTube channel where he shows the advanced features of Lumenzia. I use it mostly to make selections of different brightness areas in the image. So this is the panel. So you have the darks, the midtones, and the lights. Let's say I just want to target the lights. So I click here on the lights. Currently, I don't want to update. I already downloaded it, so I'll install it later. Now, this is the very basic luminosity mask. Once you've selected one of those, you get this slider here on the side where I can restrict it even further. So now this would be a selection just for the very bright areas and I can go down even further you also have some color masks and then let's say i just want to do a change to the curves so let's just click here it will then directly create a curves layer with the mask applied now every change i do here is just restricted to the bright tones in the image so i could darken them or brighten them at contrast it's a very handy tool and also the panel is very powerful has a lot of features but greg managed to keep it very clean so it's not overloaded like some other panels you see these days the basic functionality you see this all in this little panel and then you get additional features once you click on the several options now another plugin which is a plugin for lightroom actually which i've been now using since two years and I can't live without it anymore is Helicon Focus. So even before I used it, I did a lot of focus stacking, which always took a lot of time. And once I went to Costa Rica and took a lot of woodland photos, which I had to focus stack, I just had to find a solution that gave me some better capabilities in terms of automatic stacking and then also the retouching. And Helicon Focus is just that. It's an awesome software. I've stacked many photos with it and especially for woodland photos and complex landscape photos, it gives you very, very good results, which you can then fine tune with a very intuitive retouching panel. So I won't show you how it works now because I have several videos on it. I'll link those in the description. This one's not free. I don't know exactly what it currently costs. Let's have a look. So the lifetime license of Helicon Focus Pro, which is what I have, costs 184 euros. So it's not cheap, but it saves me so much time that I think it's a very worthwhile investment. And the good thing is you don't need to continuously pay. You have the option between subscription and lifetime license. And you can also first test it for, I don't know, a few weeks, which is free. So yeah. Just play around with it, see if it can help your workflow and then decide if you want to buy it. Now, the final plugin I've been starting to use lately is Lumina Neo. Already showed you two videos about it. So if the free versions of the Nick collection is not enough for you and you want to have a bit more power, a bit more modern tools and also AI tools, then yeah, Lumina Neo might be for you. I really like the new version. It's much more stable than previous versions of the Lumina software and it has a lot of tools. So I already showed you how I use it for architecture photography. I gave you an overview how you can use it to completely edit your raw, raw photos. And there will be future videos where I want to show you a bit how I 
use it for my landscape photos. So let's just quickly head over to Photoshop so I can show you what it can do. Also, this one's not free. I think currently they switched to a subscription based model. The base software is already very powerful, but then I think you have to pay for the different plugins of which you can decide which plugins you need. So I'll leave a link to that. You can read through it, figure out what's the cost of the software you need. And once you have it, similar to the Nick tools, what you get is here under filters, Scalum software Lumina Neo, which starts up Lumina Neo and gives you a whole bunch of editing tools. So once you're in the software, you can go to edit and this software then gives you a huge selection of tools here on the side. Every tool is basically applied as a layer so you can make changes afterward. Let's just take the super contrast here, which is a tool I like a lot for my landscape photos because it allows you to again apply contrast to different ranges in your image, midtones, shadows, highlights. And if you apply it, for example, to the highlights, it also recovers a bit of highlight detail. So you see it darkens it and adds contrast. Then for the midtones, preserves the bright and dark areas, and then you can adapt the shadows. So this is a very nice contrast tool if you want to restrict your changes to certain areas, certain brightness areas of your image, and you don't want to apply additional masks. That's just one example. So let's go up here and look at this glow filter, which I think looks nice for an image like this. So I go to glow, increase the amount. That's too much. So go to advanced here, can play around with the softness, make it a little darker, increase the contrast. You can add warmth or make it cooler, then bring down the amount a bit before and after. So making this image more dreamy and you have a whole lot of other filters, which I have to be honest, I haven't tried all of them yet and still have to figure out all the tools I'll use regularly for my landscape images. Once I figure this out, there will be a video. But yeah, that's the plugin number five, which I use for my image editing nowadays. Yeah, and that's it for the video. It was very quick. I'd now be interested to hear from you. What are your favorite plugins? You've seen mine, two of those completely free. Then Lomenzia, Helicon and Lumina Neo. They're not free, but very powerful. So decide for yourself if those are for you. Just want to share what I use regularly. And yeah, as I said, I'd be interested in learning about your preferences. So hope you liked it. If so, leave a thumbs up. See you in the next video. Bye.